Let's talk about amniocentesis. It's a procedure that's one of my favorites to do, although it's hard to convince patients that sometimes it's the best procedure for them to have. So we'll talk today about what the procedure is, how we do it, why we do it, what it involves, and the questions you should be asking your provider before you have the procedure. I'm doing a lot fewer amnios these days because NIPT or non-invasive prenatal testing has become so popular and NIPT is a very valuable screening test but it's a screening test not a diagnostic procedure and it screens for the most common chromosome abnormalities and a few genetic conditions. Amniocentesis is a diagnostic procedure. It looks at every single chromosome and it can look for hundreds of different genetic abnormalities and things like viral and bacterial infections. So amniocentesis definitely still has a place in our toolbox. The first and most important reason that we do amniocentesis is to look for genetic and chromosome abnormalities. And these can take the form of extra chromosomes, missing chromosomes, chromosome rearrangements or translocations, genetic conditions. Maybe there's a family history in your family of conditions like sickle cell disease or cystic fibrosis. Now, these are fairly common and we can tell you definitely yes or no, your baby will or won't be affected with one of these conditions. So a lot of people can get peace of mind from knowing that their baby does or does not have the condition of interest. The second reason that we do amnios is to look for infection. Sometimes people come to the hospital with a fever and abdominal discomfort, or they have ruptured membranes and we're wondering, is there an infection developing inside the uterus? We do an amniocentesis and look for bacteria, white blood cells, glucose in the amniotic fluid, or perhaps you've been exposed to a, an infection like chickenpox or rubella or cytomegalovirus or parvovirus or any one of the number of infections that are floating around. We can do an amniocentesis, collect some amniotic fluid and look for viral or bacterial particles in the amniotic fluid to know if the baby has been exposed to this condition. The third reason that we do amnios is for treatment. There are some genetic conditions like trisomy 18 where babies don't swallow as much and amniotic fluid tends to accumulate more around the baby or there are some birth defects where the fluid doesn't go from the mouth to the stomach like it should and these conditions result in a buildup of amniotic fluid and sometimes it gets to the point where moms can't even get a big deep breath or sleep at night or eat more than two bites of a meal before they're just so uncomfortable that it's hard for them to get through the day. When that happens, we can do a therapeutic amniocentesis called an amnioreduction, where we take out two liters or more of amniotic fluid. So doing that, that kind of amnio can give you so much less discomfort. The fluid does tend to reaccumulate over a week or two weeks, but it buys you some time and sometimes gets you further into the pregnancy, lets the baby get bigger, and can reduce the risk of preterm labor from that over-distended uterus. The fourth reason that we do amniocentesis is to test for fetal lung development. So sometimes, for instance, in diabetes, there's a delay in fetal lung maturity, and we want to know uh, if the baby's ready to be here so that we can proceed with delivery. We don't tend to do amnios for this reason anymore because there are plenty of cases where uh, the test has come back showing that the baby's lungs are mature, we deliver the baby, and the lungs are not so mature, and the baby ends up in the NICU. Or the procedure says that the lungs are not mature, uh, and we hold off on delivery only to have mom go into labor on her own and the baby does absolutely fine. So when we do an amniocentesis, we talk about the procedure in detail with you before we ever put a needle into you so that you know exactly what's going to happen and there are no surprises. When we do an amnio, we wash off your tummy with some cold soap. We cover up our ultrasound transducer with a sterile cover so that we can look exactly where we're going and target the biggest pocket of fluid 
hundred so that we can get right where we need to go and get out of there and we avoid sticking your baby as much as possible. Sometimes babies come in and get curious about the needle. I have had them shake the needle or back into the needle and they do exactly what you would do if you backed into a needle. They jump right back out of the way and it doesn't hurt them. So what are the risks with amniocentesis? As with any invasive procedure, there's a risk and a benefit. The benefit is obvious, it's all the information that we get. The risk is pretty small. The risk of amniocentesis is in the neighborhood of one in 500 to 1,000 that you're going to have a complication. Complications when they happen are usually either your bag of water breaks, you can have ruptured membranes, or an infection can develop inside the uterus. Infections can be very serious and the only real treatment for those is to deliver the baby. So if you have a serious complication from an amniocentesis, it's rare, but it can be devastating for the pregnancy. Fortunately, these complications are very rare. When babies have genetic abnormalities, the complication rate is a little bit higher just because complications in general are a little higher with those pregnancies. Amniocentesis is not for everyone, but if you're a girl who likes information like I do, there's nothing better than amniocentesis to give you that. There is another procedure called CVS or chorionic villus sampling, which gets you some of the same information, and we'll talk about that in another video. You need to talk with your provider about what specific information that you want, because we can tell so many things with amniocentesis, including sequencing the entire genome, and we're discovering small variations that likely have no clinical consequences, but I don't want to cause you more worry than reassurance with the procedure. So before you have an amniocentesis, talk through in detail with your provider exactly what information you want so that you don't get extra information that's just gonna cause you more worry.